Jen from Scrapping Under the Influence. I am here with a new Doodlebug project for Country Craft Creations. So this is using the brand new Doodlebug Sweet and Spooky line. And what I have here is a photo wallet. And I know I did a what something I called a photo wallet a few years ago. This one truly like looks and feels like an actual wallet. In fact, that was where I got the inspiration for this because I was at my son's swim lesson the other night and had to get my wallet looking for something and I was like you know this would be really cool to do something kind of in that style as a little you know simple project so this is five by eight and a half I added one of the this and that stickers on the back there um, this does not take a ton of paper I think it was maybe five sheets of artisan cardstock and then um, so like some just scraps and things from the collection and then a couple of full sheets but nothing like crazy on the front here i have the acetate odds and ends pieces so you can see that shine there um and those were fun and they're just so cute and so much fun to do um the halloween and the trick-or-treating are both from the um odds and ends or not odds and ends chit chat and then the little starburst things are from the um, Hocus Pocus Shape Sprinkles. And then the candy is, here is the mini icons. And this these little guys are from the Puffy Stickers. And this is from the, I don't remember the name of it. And I apparently put it away. Oh, no, there it is. The Spooky Spiders Shape Sprinkles. So you open it up. I just used one of the border strips here because of how this closes. I really couldn't do much else right here. And really it didn't need it. It just, it's cute and the paper's adorable. And you've got ghosts and bats and pumpkins and moons and cute haunted houses. So there it is. Okay. Up here, I've got a three by four photo mat, which of course, you know, I've left everything open around that. I might actually, we'll see, put pictures in this, but I say that every time and it rarely happens. Um, so odds and ends pieces and then some of the mini icon stickers there and this opens up and as you can see this is a wallet so we've got our little card holders here so the little stacked pockets and then I've just matted some of the three by four cut aparts and they will slide down in there and then here I've got a pocket and then on top of that you know you always have your little ID pocket so I did one with the acetate the patterned acetate, which I love, 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 love. Um, up here, we've got a pocket up here behind those. And I've got a cut apart um, matted and then just a piece of the paper from the collection matted up there. And then back here, I've actually got a five by seven mat. Um, actually, I think it's four and three quarters by five and or seven and six and three quarters anyway just to make sure it would actually it would fit but I, I could have gone the full five by seven and it would have fit in here um, so I've got one in there and then I've got another little pocket hidden on the bottom down here and that's simply because like I said when I was inspired to do this I was going through my wallet and my wallet underneath this like top section there is a little pocket down underneath here and I've got like some this is silly because Today is my 22nd wedding anniversary. In that little pocket, I have a strip of like photo booth pictures that my husband took and sent to me from Turkey before we were ever even married. So that's where I was like, okay, no, I still have to have my funny little pocket under here. So this one actually, it'll it'll hold two or three, you know, little photo mats underneath here. So, um, and then down here, we've got some more just stacked pockets, you know, just very basic. They will hold the four by four cut aparts, um, you know, so I've got a couple of those matted in here as well as um, three by four cut aparts. 
and then this flips up as if it were oops those are not all the way down in that's why as if like you know the older style wallets where you still had the checkbook in there which mine does not have but it was you know the thinking behind this and two other photo mats here so I've got the um, haunted house and the mini ghosts and stuff from the um, odds and ends this is from the chit chat and then these are from the icon stickers and chit chat so this comes together super fast literally I sat down and made a prototype this afternoon and it took me like 25 30 minutes maybe and that was with me screwing it up uh, the tutorial obviously is a little bit longer because I go over like how to cut your matting when you're doing the notches and, and the different little things like that so um, full tutorial is about an hour uh, but nothing too hard so as always thank you for watching if you want to be notified when I post new videos please like subscribe and ring the bell and you will get notified when I post new projects for both Country Craft Creations and for Doodlebug themselves and um, as always thank you I appreciate you guys and let's get to the tutorial okay so for our wallet we're gonna assemble the two pieces for the top and the bottom first okay so I'm going to start off with the top. So for that, you're going to need a piece of acetate that is three and three eighths by three and five eighths. I've got a clear piece here. I think I might actually use a scrap of that, um, the patterned heavy acetate. So I'm going to actually switch this out. But for what we're doing right now, it doesn't matter. Okay. You're going to need a piece nine and a half by eight and a half. We are going to start with the nine and a half at the top, and you're gonna score this at half an inch. You're gonna turn it all the way around and half an inch again, okay? You're gonna turn it to the eight and a half side, and you're gonna score at half an inch, four and a half, and That's it. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Something. I don't know why I wrote it eight and a half down a second at a time. Okay. All right. Next up, we've got a piece that is nine and a half by five and seven sixteenths. So when you're cutting that on your trimmer, this is a quarter inch line. The tall one in between the full inch and the quarter inch is your eighth of an inch. The little short line in between that you cannot see here, but you can see here, that is your 16th. So five, 7 16th is the one between the 3 8 and the half, eight, half inch line. Okay. I hate to do that to you, but it's going to go to be together better if we do it that way. Okay. So for this one, we are just going to score this at half an inch starting on the nine and a half turn half an inch again turn it and half an inch one more time so two short sides one long side okay so four and a half up we've got three pieces four and a half by four with the four and a half at the top you're going to score it half an inch turn it and half an inch so just on the two sides okay you're going to do that on both all three of those okay I'm going to leave those in one pile our other pieces, we're going to have a flap that is eight and a half by five and a half. You're going to score that at half an inch with the five and a half at the top. And then you're going to have two each, five and one eighth by five, five and one eighth at the top. You're going to score half an inch, turn it half an inch again. You're going to do that on both. You're going to have 
two pieces, five and one eighth by four. We're gonna do the exact same thing, five and one eighth at the top. Score it half an inch, turn it half an inch again. And finally, five and one eighth by three. And same thing, starting on the five and one eighth side, you're gonna score half an inch, turn it to the opposite side, and half an inch again. Okay. So, before we go any further with those, I'm gonna grab my envelope punch board because we wanna notch all of these pockets, okay? So because these are five and one eighth, when it's folded, when the sides are folded in to make the pocket, it's gonna be four and one eighth. So we're gonna go two, we're gonna line that score line up at two inches and then back it up so it's between the two inch and the seven eighths, okay? No, not back it up. Move it to the other side. So between the two and the two and one eighth, okay? And if you want to, to make sure that they're even, you can do them together, okay? Which is what I'm going to do because it's not going to be too much to punch through both of these at the same time. I say that as then it gets hard. <laughs> and again, okay. This one, because it's a flap, doesn't get notched. Let's go ahead and put these. No, I'm gonna just stack that all up because these are all gonna go on like so, but it's probably going to be easier to mat these when they're like this, and I have not cut my matting for these yet. So I'm gonna just set that whole little stack aside. I'm gonna bring in my other stack. So we've got our four and three quarter by four and a half. And because I screwed up my scoring on these, I need, do need to double check. Okay, so these are gonna be three and a half inches across the top when they're done. So we want to go to one and three fourths, okay? So you're gonna line that score up, line up at one and three quarters pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> I am. And then you're going to punch. I'm going to stand up to do that. There we go. Much better. Okay. Same thing here with all three of these. You're going to line it up at one and three quarters for that score line and punch. Ooh, got through all three. I'm impressed. Okay. This one, we're gonna go to one inch with the score line and punch. And we're gonna go to one inch on this side and punch. And then we will cut out that space in between, okay? This one, we're gonna go two inches and punch. And then flip it over and two inches and punch again, okay? Let me go ahead and grab my trimmer. Or you can do this with like a ruler and a craft knife. It's entirely up to you. Um, to cut out that little center section here. So I'm just gonna line this up in my trimmer and get my little guide wire here on the Fiskars trimmer so that it is at the bottom of that notch. Then I can just go across, and there you go. Same thing on this one. Get that out of the way. Okay. Go there. Okay, next 
thing we want to do is we're going to take one of, no, not those, wrong stack. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and a pencil and I'm going to go a quarter of an inch in from my score line. I'm going to start a quarter inch up from the bottom one and draw up. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to line up the bottom of that notch at a quarter of an inch and go across. Okay, so that's where we need to cut out. Okay, so I'm going to line up my guide wire. in. I can go ahead and erase my pencil marks that run off the side and if you ended up just slightly you know inside of one of them like I did on that section go ahead and erase them there too. Okay so this is where your acetate is going to go. So let me find my acetate, the pattern acetate. I'll be right back. Okay, so there is my patterned acetate. I want to just double check how big I need to cut this. So I'm going to go three and five eighths by three and three eighths. So three and three eighths and three and five eighths. Of course it just slid on me, but that's okay. Okay. So to adhere that in, I am just going to use eighth inch score tape. that I'm going to run right around the edge of my opening. And right there. And you really could, if you wanted to, um, when you go and put this down on the pocket on top of the other pocket, you could actually make this into a little shaker if you wanted to. Um, it would be really fun to do it with like the uh, oh, what is that? Like the net mesh stuff and do it like that would be super cute. But I'm gonna do it this way so it is a little window that you could slip a picture underneath if you wanted to, um, or a photo mat that you can then pull out. Um, that's what I'm gonna do. So I wanna make sure that my side that's facing up is of course the side that is the more vibrant side because there is 
a back side to this. I'm going to line that up in there, and I totally missed where that tape needed to go on that side, but ultimately it's not going to matter um, because it isn't a shaker. It is just a window, and I'm not going to try to get that off. I'm just going to go over that with my powder tool and then get the extra powder off, and that will be good. Okay, so next up I am going to I lose my scissors apparently because they've disappeared. Okay, next up I'm going to go ahead and miter all my corners so that they're ready to go. There they are. Somehow they ended up in the scrap pile over there. So with your pockets, you're going to go across that score line that intersects, okay, just like always. And then you're going to miter at the top of the pocket. Okay. So here we're going to miter at the top, through the score lines on the bottom. All right. So this one we can actually assemble, okay? Because this one it'll be re really easy to stick a little mat down in there. Or for that matter, you really could just leave it black if you wanted to, other than you're going to see a little bit of your tab here, which isn't ideal, but um, it's up to you. If you don't mind that because you might slip a picture or something in there or a photo mat in there, then it really is kind of up to you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish all of those little sides. Okay, and then this will line up exactly on the top of this pocket. So then you have your little window like you have on a wallet. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just clip around the edges, and since this is only a little half inch tab we haven't folded, these will slide right in there and clip exactly where I want them to. No problem, other than I didn't got it up again. And I have tons of these clips. I could always use more. <laughs> in fact, I think I have more in the closet, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside for a minute to dry. I am gonna go ahead, the matting I absolutely have to have right now is gonna be the matting that's gonna go across right here, okay? So the finished pocket on this will be eight and a half across the top, so I'm gonna do that eight and three eighths, and it's only gonna show for a about an inch, I think it is. Hold on. About an inch and a quarter. So that's a super easy one to, to um, go ahead and cut. So I'm going to go ahead and get that one cut and a couple other mats and come back and I'll show you how to mat the notched pot. I got sidetracked, we didn't finish trimming our edges. So, okay, we've got our, this base. Okay, we're gonna do that one last. We've got our one prepped ready to go. So these three pieces that are four and a half by four, all you're gonna do is miter them at the top where your notch is. You don't need to worry about the bottom because of the way these pockets specifically are going together. And it's going to be the same on some on the other section. Okay. This pocket, you're going to go ahead and miter just like you always do on a normal pocket that has the bottom like that. So we're going to get on the top and then through the score line on the bottom. Okay. Now, this one. This one is going to have kind of a little trick to it. So you've done your notch, you've got your score lines. Up here on the top where the notch is, you're going to miter like normal. Okay. 
On this bottom where the score lines cross, you're gonna miter like normal down here as well. Okay. So now you've got the section in the middle where there's the score line. What you're gonna do, and I don't normally cut into my score lines, but in this case, we kind of have to. I'm gonna take a wedge that way. And a wedge that way, so you're taking a V out. Okay, I'm gonna do that on both sides. So again, why my hand shaky today, but apparently it is if I try to just hold it up like that. Okay, all right, like so. This piece, we're gonna fold it over like so and burnish. And I'm going to erase my measurement off of there. So I don't go and mat this and have some little pencil marks sticking out that I don't realize is there, okay? And these two tabs, you're gonna fold in and burnish. I have got glue on here, it's even a weird little mark on my paper. It's not normal, okay. All right, so this one is gonna close up like that. And I'm sure you're kind of at this point going, okay, well, what about this? So this one is gonna sit on top of this pocket, about a quarter of an inch up from the bottom, about half an inch down from the top. And what it's gonna be is you're gonna have your pocket up here and then you're gonna have a pocket from the bottom because the whole reason I came up with this is I was, I think at my son's swim lesson and I got in my wallet looking for something and I've got, you know, like the big pocket up here and then, you know, you've got your like window for your ID and then your credit card pockets. But then mine has a little opening under here. And I was like, I bet I could do that with paper. So that's what we're doing. Okay. So this one, we're going to go ahead and fold and burnish. So this closes up like this. So this one is going to bend to the back. Okay. So I'm going to fold this one down and burnish. And it's four o'clock and I'm going to have to stop and go make pizza dough here in about two minutes. I fold and burnish. Okay. And this one we're going to glue like this. But what I want to do is I want to line this up so I've got that little, you know, about a quarter of an inch here and it's going to, you know, it's going to be about a quarter of an inch both directions, okay? I'm going to go ahead and put glue on this tab. Okay. And again, I'm going to line it up inside my score lines on this pocket. Make sure I'm centered and go ahead and burnish that down. Okay. Then we're going to take our matting for right here because it's going to go down over where we just glued that pocket bottom. Okay. So I'm not sure which one I want right here. I think it's going to be my I think it's going to be the orange dots. We'll get some pumpkins in there somewhere else. Okay, so this one, we notched it at one inch. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do one inch, turn it over, and one inch again. 
And then before I cut anything else, I'm going to lay this on here and make sure I did that right, which I did not. That's what I was afraid of. Sorry, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Okay, so we are actually going to go in about an eighth of an inch, which where I started this one at one inch, not the best decision, but we can very easily just kind of scooch it over and punch again and be just fine. Okay, that's about right. So now I can go ahead and grab my trimmer and do the same thing I did before, lining this up. to trim out that little middle section. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead actually I can go ahead and glue this pocket closed and then slide this down inside to mat. In fact that's what I want to do because I don't want my tabs from my pocket showing not that they necessarily would but just in case. Burnish those down. Okay. And then I want to go ahead and glue this down because I don't want to bend that matting when I put it on there. So those are down. Now I can get glue on this and this will slide right down in and line up and it's good. spacing that I want and there we go and look at that we've hidden that seam and it's nice and matted and ready to go okay so this one we can go ahead and mat and put down because the way these pockets are gonna sit on top of it we want this one actually this one needed to go the full width of this didn't it it's okay I will use it on my other piece over here. So I'm going to set that one aside. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and actually, since it is going to be the full width, I am going to go ahead and do it with the pumpkins. So this is four inches. So I will go three and seven eighths on that one. And then eight and three eighths. I know I'm like actually have it turned the right way, which has got to be some kind of miracle because I never turn this the right way. But here we are. Okay, so that's gonna sit there. And I think I like the pumpkins, I think that's gonna be cute. Okay, so we're gonna go one and seven eighths, one and seven eighths. Did I just do that wrong again? Nope, we're good. Okay. And then again, line up to cut out that section there. And we'll go ahead and glue this one down. Okay. So 
since that one's the only one where we actually had to cut out did I do that? Um, that section. That one's good to go. So next up, I'm going to grab my little acetate piece here. So I think what I will do is I will cut some matting to put in here. And I think I'm going to use the back side of this one with those... Um, I think that's how I'm going to do it because I don't think I want anything color in there now because it takes away. So I'm going to use end up using the back side of that, but I can do that after the fact. That one's not going to matter. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish all of my little tabs here. Okay, and this one, oh, maybe I didn't need to mat the full thing. I didn't need to. Dang it, that's okay. So just know you don't need to mat the entire thing. You could have gotten away with just doing the very top. Could not remember for the life of me, and because my prototype didn't get matted, wasn't thinking about that. Okay, so bottom tab only at this point. Okay, so we want to line this up at the bottom and all the way out here at the edge because what we're going to do then is we're going to take these three pieces and I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish my sides on these we want that loose because we want to figure out exactly where these want to, these need to go before we start gluing so that we get them spaced evenly. Okay. All right, so when this is all the way down, from that edge, we've got four and an eighth, and we'll call it four and a quarter inches, okay? So I want to space these as evenly as I can and I'm just going to lay them in here for now so that I can move them around and figure out where exactly they need to go. Okay? So I kind of want to do it, I think, like that so that we've got a nice big end down here. So I'm going to say we're going one inch in. So I'm going to lay that down. I'm sorry that we have one inch out. Yeah, that's exactly how I'm going to do it. Okay. And I'm going to mark one inch, two inches, three inches. Okay. We want to start with the furthest one out because this one is going to go flat and then they stack on top the rest of the way back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put glue on my sides. is where my drip problem is coming from. Okay, and then just a very thin line on the bottom. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna line this up here. Like so, okay. Then I can go Here's my next one, and just repeat the process. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna line that up there, and down they all go. So we got a little bit of that showing. If you didn't want to notch any of these, you don't have to. I just think it kind of gives it more of that 
feel that I'm going for. Okay. And again, so I know where to start. We'll just fold down over the top and it all lines up perfectly. Just like that. Okay. All right. That will be ready to go into our base when we get to that point. Um, so at this point, you can go ahead and fold your tabs on your ends over and burnish. Your side ones are gonna be really easy to do that because there's enough bulk behind them from the project itself. Okay. And it might be easier to turn it this way to get that bottom one. Okay, so that piece of it is done, ready to go on the base when we get to the base. Um, all I need to do is mat those three little sections. And for that, I am going to use, I don't know. <laughs> because all I need is about one and a quarter inches. I am going to leave this black here because we've got that acetate there and then I'll do my one little piece on the inside there. Wherever I lost that sheet of paper. So I'm gonna go Let me change that blade. Three and three eighths. There. I only need to go about three and a half the other direction. And then this is just going to slide right down inside of that pocket. Yep, I'm going to take a tiny bit more off of that. Or did I just turn it wrong? I think I had it turned wrong <laughs> because of course I did. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Okay, so that'll just go in just like that. And then actually, so what is happening here? So I've got this pocket and then there's one underneath it. You can leave it like that if you wanted to glue this front piece here down so that this one sits just you know, flat, flat, you absolutely could do that, but I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to get this, make sure the glue on the back of that where it's going to go in. It's not going to need a ton because it's going to kind of just sit. And crying out loud. There we go. All right. That is in. My excess glue here and if you wanted to mat around that you could I might end up going ahead and doing it anyway at this point I don't think I'm going to all right so since I've got this piece cut I think I am just gonna go like one and a quarter let's actually get it to one and a quarter I'm so used to using this upside down it's like crazy okay so those are three and a half, which means it's one and three quarters. So I'm going to go in to one and five eighths. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to go one and five eighths again. Because all that's going to do is just kind of widen that notch so that when we mat it, you've got a little bit wider of a border. Okay. 
and that needed to be more than one and a quarter apparently. All right, I think that's why I was doing one and a half. Actually, let's go one and three quarters. Let's see where that puts us, if that's slid in there. Yep, I think that'll work. So, same thing again. One and five eighths. Flip it around. One and five eighths. And there we go. Okay, so one and three quarters again. And like so. And if you get, okay, you can kind of see there's like a little like bump. All you have to do is stick it in there and just hit it one more time, like right in the middle. And it will clear that right out of there for you. Okay, so one and three quarters again. those pieces. So that's all you do when it is just that single notch. It's very, very easy. Okay, so those will go in like so. Other than I think I just got them out of order. I was trying to keep it so it was kind of like just going across. There we go. Not that it's going to be super noticeable that way, but I will know that I did it that way and that will make me happy. <laughs> okay. Just slide that in there, line it up, and down it goes. Very, very easy. Or for that matter, if I wanted to. I did glue that down. I think it leaked on me and it just went where it wasn't supposed to go, but that's okay. It popped right back up for me. Okay. All right. So there we go. Um, next up, we've got our flap that's going to have our stacked pockets on it. And we are going to do these pockets the exact same way we just did those. Um, So these are all, uh, let's see what I'm looking for here, scored, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> so we just need to miter the top corner on all of these. Um, you could miter the bottom corners, I don't think it's going to matter. Let's see once I kind of fold it and stack them what it looks like but I don't think it's going to matter. the way these are stacking and matting I don't know that it really matters but okay so I'm gonna leave that one flat I'm gonna go to the next size and go ahead and fold and burnish and then it's gonna glue exactly the same way
And apologies if you can hear my husband out there with the weed eater. Um, but he's kind of obsessed with trimming the grass. I don't know why. Granted, our yard looks spectacular, and that is all of his hard work. I have nothing to do with that. But occasionally you hear him when he does it. So fortunately, my window back behind me faces on like the side of the house where there's about three feet of grass, so he's not there for long. Okay. All right. So there's one. Okay, you can do the exact same thing over here. Leave the biggest one flat for right now. score lines. Try not to get your little gluey fingerprints on it, which I'm sure you all understand that. <laughs> kind of unavoidable sometimes, but that's okay. All right. your flap. So this is the five and a half by eight and a half. We're going to go ahead and miter our corners. Okay. I'm going to leave this flat for now. I'm going to take my first piece. Actually, I'm going to mat this first. So this piece is going to go right here at the top because these are going to sit here. Oh no, do they go all the way up? They do, don't they? Almost. So no, I'm not going to do that. Um, well, it's on the back side of that. The back side of that is that black print, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to do that just because you're going to see just barely in that notch, you'll see this. So. I am going to go ahead and put that down. Okay. So now, what we want to do before we glue anything, just in case we need to make any adjustments to these pockets. And this is the reason they are 5 and 1 8. Because even though you cut it exactly, you score it exactly, somehow just the paper tends to kind of pull and expand more than you expect. So when you're doing these side by side like this, it's best if they're just slightly under what you ultimately want. Because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave just the teensy bit of an eighth of an inch of a border on each end. So I'm going to line these up in exactly on top of my matting. Okay. So glue along the bottom. And this is going to go all the way to the bottom. like so. Okay, there you go. Same thing on the other side. So if you want it to go a little bit more, I had done them on my prototype where they were each um, four and a quarter wide and ended up somehow with it hanging off the edge like an eighth of an inch. So I went, you know what, we're just going to, of course now he's really out there tearing it up, I apologize. Um, 
because we're going to do that, I could actually take and very carefully trim that right to the edge of those, and that would work too. Um, but there is our next assembly. So let's go ahead, set that aside for right now. You're going to do the same thing matting those that you did there. This is, of course, going to flip up, and we'll just do um, a layout type thing underneath that. Um, but let me grab our base. So the base is eight and a half by 11 and a half. Okay. We are going to score this at five inches, five and a half inches, 10 and a half inches, and 11. Okay. We then have a piece that is eight and a half by three and a half, which is literally the scrap from this side. When you cut it this to eight and a half, you'll have this piece left. Just cut it to eight and a half because that's going to go as our flap. So I'm going to miter just up here at the top. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and fold this over and burnish. And then I'm going to line this one up right on top of it and glue it on there because this is our closure flap. Okay. Fold over our next score line and burnish that one. There's our top. Bring that back up. Fold in our next one and burnish. And the next one and burnish. Okay, and there's our base. That is literally the simplest piece of this whole thing. Okay, so I'm gonna take our bottom flap, I'm gonna fold that tab up, I'm gonna burnish, and that is gonna go in right here at the bottom, okay? So I don't know if it's gonna be more helpful to you. The easiest way I found to do it, quite honestly, was to put it, okay, so it's gonna flip back like this, Kind of laid it in here like this, after I got my glue on it, that is. Okay, made sure it was good side to side. And then fold that up and over, and then come back and adjust. That way I know it's lined up exactly where I want it. Everything from that standpoint is good. It lines up, everything closes up the way it's supposed to. We're all good, okay? Our other assembly is gonna go up here just like so, okay? And this one, you're gonna go ahead and do your glue on your bottom tab, because pockets are much easier to put in when you're not trying to glue down all three sides at once. Adjust it side to side a little bit if you need to. I think I'm actually good. Okay. Then I can open this up. Get my glue here and here. And down it goes. Okay. So I just need to finish matting my pockets and I will come back and kind of show you my inserts and how we're doing that. The rest of it is very straightforward. We are going to add a magnet, so let me grab that. And tape, somewhere there's 
first tape. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this up and center it up over here. Grab another piece of tape, figure out which way my magnet needs to go. Line them up, over, and down. Okay, there's our magnet, and that's it. If you wanted, and I might go ahead, I hadn't decided if I was going to add a little pocket on the back side. I think I am, so let me get that prepped and ready. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and finish matting this. I am going to do go ahead and round my corners on this top outside flap. I don't want to do it on my inside piece. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that because I think it's going to look nice and there we go. So let me go ahead and get some matting done and then I will get our pocket for our back ready to go. I'll be right back. Okay, so I ended up deciding I did need a mat to go around the edge of that because I just, it just was looking odd to me. Um, so what I did is I cut a mat that would fit like as if the pocket or, or the, not the pocket, the acetate were not there. And then what I did is I lined it up like top to bottom where it needed to go, kind of pulled it out to the side here and then marked where the window was and then did the same this way and then used a ruler to draw my lines and then cut them to make my frame. Um, you could absolutely just use strips. That would have worked actually really well too. But um, I, of course, chose to do it the hard way because this is what I do. Um, so there we go. All right. Let me go ahead and put this on here. Okay. All right, so all I've got left to do is just mat in my little flap area there. Uh, front and back are matted. Um, I just need to decorate. And I decided against putting a pocket on the back. I think I'm just going to add some decoration on the back just because then when you're looking at it, it's not going to sit completely flat. But you absolutely could add a pocket or something back here. In fact, one that ran the entire width of this would be really cool. Um, but I decided not to go that route. So. As always, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Um, oh, inserts. Hold on. Not going anywhere yet. Inserts. Okay, so inserts. What I've got are just some of the cut-aparts, and you can mat these if you want to. It's entirely up to you. I think I'm going to mat these, but these pockets down here are sized so that the 4x4 cut-aparts should slide right down in here. Um, if I mat them, I will trim them down just a tiny bit. So there's a couple of options there for the 4x4 four four cut aparts. And then, of course, you've got your 3x4 cut aparts. And we've got some that are um, landscapes, so those will slide in here just perfectly. Um, in fact, I could slide this one, except I had a little bit of glue stick there. Well, maybe. What have I done? Oh, because I'm catching on the mat. So, you know, I could slide that in here. Um, you know, we've got other ones that, you know, are oriented the other direction, but we do have a few that are the landscape ones that will just slide in there perfectly. And then, um, of course, four by six mats, which let me cut one out of some scraps really quickly here because I've got tons of scraps. Um, your 4 by 6 mats will sit in here, of course, back here. In fact, you could probably get 5 by 7 in that back and then down here on the very bottom. Um, so that's about it. Um, as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys stopping by, and I will see you next time. Bye!